Hello. Are you happy? Oh. Hello. Hi, guys. Javi, if you are talking about something, you unmute. No, actually, I'm not talking. I'm okay. just getting getting ready for for the meeting. I I guess we can wait a couple of minutes before starting. Okay. Cool. I guess that we, we can start. The meeting is recorded anyway, so we, we can take a look later. As always, a reminder to to follow and comply with the antitrust policy, policy notice and the code of conduct uh, that you guys can see in the, in the presentation. I am attaching right now the link to the presentation. And let's go through the agenda that we have today. We have a small section around updates and we are going to have around 15 to 10 to 15 minutes of talk around improving and adding concrete user examples, use case examples, and also uh, talking about adding issuance capabilities to our SDK and how can we achieve that. And then as usual, the maintainers and community growth section and the questions and answers. So yeah, around the updates, like there's not many changes from previous week, but it is uh, an, like iterating again that your contributions to the GitHub discussions are very valuable. And so far we are having the discussions around these three topics, supporting different DIT methods, adding issuance capabilities to the SDKs, and improving and adding concrete user examples. Then instead of just having the update and waiting for for the inputs today we are going to take a different approach and we are just going to start having the talks like whoever is in the in the room we are starting the 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 conversations around these features so the first one is uh, the one that you see on screen and it is around talking um or creating better use case examples Right now, as you know, the quick started guide that we have in Hyperledger is a little bit too generic. And we would like to simplify this in the following way. First of all, the quick started guide should be easier to run. But then second, we think that they would be more valuable if we were showing concrete examples. Like create a flow only with SD, JWT, and connectionless presentation flow. Something like this. And then most of you that have experience on building applications within Identus, we would like to get some feedback from you around that. Um, and it's I think I've brought one, one example that we could do, but then feel free to go into that GitHub discussion and, and bring your your own proposal. And then how we will choose the ones that are prioritized earlier are the ones that get more votes. So on, underneath the GitHub discussion or the comment that you write, you will see an arrow up. And there is a way that we can classify the comments and see the ones that get more votes. Um, we, we are also, as a team in Identus, we are also going to keep our inputs. Um, and we will give this a period of time. Meanwhile, we will continue building uh, the examples. I'm not sure if we have any questions so far. If not, I just move on to the next conversation.
do you guys have any idea of what, what you would like to see as an example? Like something less generic than the quick started guide that you guys would find valuable? I do have some ideas from some examples and would be nice to discuss here, mm -hmm. but maybe at the end of the talk. Okay. Well, I'm done for the talk, you know? My idea was literally having the talk, so. Okay. So so one of the things that uh, I would like to try to do is like an online course that issues a credential. So basically this, this use case would only use the, um, the cloud agent and would be a very simple web page that, um, that would uh, have like an exam at the end. And after that exam, you could put the ID of a deed and that would start the issuing process of that credential, something like that. So something very simple that anyone else can just for the uh, clone the, the GitHub and make it running on the Docker. So this would be one of the exam examples that I would like to, to make. So you mean literally everything inside the Docker file, right? Yes, so basically it would be a, a Docker that would start. Um, yeah, like a micro sandbox, let's say. Yes, so would start the, um, the cloud agent and would start a web server, so a web page that serves a web page. And internally, that web page would call the cloud agent API to issue the credential. So something very simple that is just a draft for other projects to be. But then, Fabio, on, on the. Um... On the, on the demo, would you do that uh, like very open as it is now that you can do SDJWT, you can do JWT or Anon creds, or would you stick with a concrete user example? I would stick with a concrete user example. Okay. So just uh, most of the stuff would be hard coded. So this would just be a, a use case, like someone can just uh, clone the project, look into it and understanding very, very easily. So mm -hmm. would be the minimum amount of code. The web page would also be very simple. So no CSS or anything like that. <laughs> because yes. I'm not a front end guy, but I think would be a nice starting for other users. Yeah, completely yeah. agree. Instead of building in local, which is what we currently ask, we just bundle a working version that we know works and that's it. Ravi, I'd like to add one more thing here. Yes, you, I'm sorry, I never find how to raise the hands on this uh, Mac uh, Zoom, so I'm sorry if I interject like this, but uh, no just problem. Uh, I want to remind everyone, I, I made a 30 minutes video for what Fabio is asking here. Uh, I uh, I will try to find it back and, and post it in the in this year. So I made it with a, an identity that I hosted initially on localhost on my machine, but it's the, it's going for the full uh, uh, question of date, question of VC validation, proof, etc., everything. And in the last two weeks, in fact, I've uh, put it well. What I would say to prod on my side, it's not prod on identity side because. I don't think it's not pointing to a Cardano prod. It's still on, on uh, uh, in um, internal um, uh, I don't use database basically, but it's it's on on uh, on prod and I've got also full detailed APIs. Uh, um, uh, it's part of a project I've uh, uh, delivered on Catalyst uh, and it's it's my final stage of the project. So I, I will post if you want a few more links into this here, but for me, there's already exists a lot of documentation for this and, and part of this documentation, I've done it myself and uh, I think it's valuable. So now uh, regarding the question, Ravi, uh, I think for me, the Anon creds is, uh, the, both the Anon creds and how to get anonymity with did, which is another matter, I think, but the Anon creds will be a, a good example to do, which goes through all the, uh, um, using schemas, using definitions, all of these things, which is more advanced, let's say, than, than the normal uh, basic usage. 
that that that's great feedback i think actually one of the proposals which is mine if i'm not mistaken i pro i am proposing to add an sdjwt example and then yeah that's they work almost 90 percent in the same way they both have selective disclosure they both have zero knowledge proof and we can do a concrete demo with that and what fabio said which is in order to run the quick started guide, you need to run one Docker command. Yeah, so Eric, can, can you participate on that discussion and put there the links to your repository? Uh, and I will. Uh, I will send you some links. In I, I need to find them back. But uh, as we as you continue the the discussion, I will put some links in there. Yeah, but, that would uh, be great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And we and we can like document on on the. Yeah. the official documentation so other users could just uh, find in fact, the project. I, have, I have in fact uh, also uh, fully documented how to put a uh, identities on uh, aws so and i'm using it on aws now it's like prod ready again the only difference is that it's not going on to cardinal prod in cardinal mainnet it's 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 still uh, the identity part is is not uh, plugged into cardinal mainnet but the rest is all all uh, all working and I've got my library on top of it just to simplify some use case. Okay, that's good. All, all APIs are open. I, I will post the, the links. That is awesome. Um, I think we can we can move on to the next topic. Fabio, do you do you agree on that? Uh, yes. Cool. So the next topic, and, and again, we have other topics that we want to bring, but we, we need to start choosing and, and, and start by one or the other. So the second thing that we are going to talk about today is adding issuance capabilities to the SDKs or to the Edge SDK, which basically means that it will be able to um, create and publish Prism deeds on whatever VDR we, we decide on Cardano, on testnet, or in memory, or whatever it is. Then second, we will be able, in a feature, when the VDR component is ready, we will be able to also manage the rev revocation registry for those credentials. And we will also be able to issue credentials to holders using the SDK directly. And this makes everything uh, easier to use in the sense that for some specific use cases, if, for example, you need to have a different networking that is not uh, DITCOM, then you would need to build everything from scratch today. If we add additional capabilities, you could build your own customized version of the agent which has issuance, verification, and holding capabilities. Then for all the Prism did related stuff, what we are discussing here is to use an external API service, which could be the writing the Prism did operations on chain. And then uh, as you as you know, Fabio already completed recently the universal resolver integration, which is running on Cardano mainnet. So you can basically put in, if you go to the Universal Resolver website, you can basically add any Prism did that is in Cardano mainnet and it will get resolved. Um, and yeah, in here, what we are basically trying to discuss or, or try to understand together is if this is valuable for, for everyone or not, and try to bring your point around it. Um, having that said, do do we have any opinions or if not, I can drop my two cents because this is one of the ones that I'm really interested about. So why, why I think it's important, <clears throat> as I said, it, because for some specific users that I would love that they would be here, but they aren't because it's not their time zone. But yeah, for, for some users that are trying to use Identus, like what we bundle as, as a cloud agent has too many services and too many decisions that some projects do not need. 
So there is some projects integrating Identus that want to go for a full decentralized or peer-to-peer -peer networking stack, which goes a little bit against having a central server or having uh, Ditcom in itself. Ditcom is not centralized by nature, but yeah, they, they are like different architectures. Then I think that's valuable on one side. Then on the second hand, I think other use cases where you do not need to have like I don't know, hypothetically, a local validation that does not, does not require to be on chain or all these kind of things. You could basically issue and do everything in local with the SDK and get you ready for running your project earlier. Um, but yeah, I don't have any more, any more to say. Anyone else? Like Shailesh, Curtis, Fabio, or Gonzalo, Yuri? John, Santi. Nothing at the moment. Yep. Yes, yes, I also have input regarding this capability. And as for me, it's a really important uh, feature that will, uh, that can clearly define the boundaries between custodial and non-custodial solutions. And uh, the issues in SDK is, uh, for me, is uh, just the one stage in uh, this uh, path. Uh, what I see uh, that we need to do is to propose a clear separation between uh, cloud agent plus controller and the different types of SDKs. And I believe that these two uh, components uh, should be absolutely independent from <coughs> Uh, from each other in order to build the different uh, solutions. So uh, the original Fabio's idea was to uh, implement the DIT controller in the SDK. So having the DIT controller, you can uh, manage your DIT prism, uh, change different uh, rotate keys, change uh, services, and do everything that you can do currently in the cloud agent. So in this case, we will have a feature parity between the cloud agent and all edge agents. After this, uh, as soon as you can uh, manage your deed and it's publicly available and resolve resolvable through the universal resolver, we can add the issuance capabilities to the edge uh, agent. And uh, it will be kind of a second stage when uh, both cloud agent add and edge agent can be uh, can play a role of issuers and uh, after this uh, there are a variety of options uh, to uh, consider uh, i believe that at the same time we are going to extract uh, some apis from the cloud agent into the vdr so vdr will be kind of a shared component that cloud agent and, and edge agent can use and uh, after this it even will be possible to build uh, uh, offline solutions when we can uh, uh, keep some uh, keys and data uh, for offline usage and uh, uh, issue and verify credentials between two edge agents like uh, a mobile application without internet. I know that it's not easy to implement, but it will be uh, possible with particular limitations. Yeah. So it's a long path and I believe that it's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, plus also if in a future and step by step, of course, we cannot change the cloud agent everything right now, right? But if step by step we start migrating everything that, that doesn't include business logic to the SDK, in, in this case the agent would use the JVM SDK, then I think in a future things would look a lot easier to maintain, right? The, the SDK will contain the core logic. And then the business, the business, um, the business logic will reside inside of the cloud agent or whatever instance of the agent. Um, yeah, if it's also possible to optimize the component structure. Yeah. 
Cool. So yeah, I, I also invite everyone to give a vote on, on this section. Uh, if not, again, I think that we, we will internally vote it also and at some point get the voting closed. But I, I, I think that we still need to provide a couple more weeks or one more week, at least to give everyone that has been in these events a little bit more time to analyze all that. Um, is there any question or anyone that wants to to talk about this? So about that, I would like to clarify some my point of view on this is that um, I, I believe that uh, SSI is important. So having a way to for the SDKs to to write the deed to, to make it official on the uh, blockchain. So the Prisma deed is uh, some way very simple and it basically needs to be metadata on Cardano. And I, I believe that the users could have a wallet that just do a transaction on Cardano with that metadata. So this will allow that they, them to manage their own deeds. And I think this is important for anyone to have control over their own identities. So they still need to tap to some service to put that uh, metadata on, on Cardano, but it doesn't need anything to be related with, with identities. So the, the SDKs is, are pretty close to, to generate the, the bytes that needs to be on, on the blockchain so that, the, the, for, ex for example, you could read the deeds from the universal resolver. So I think it's this first step is very simple to do. We just need to, some service to submit that metadata, and the SDKs are close to to issue that metadata. Yeah, I agree. Like the amount of like for for many things, we already have insurance capabilities, and let me tell you why. Except the Ditcom protocols, the rest will we already have it because we are testing, and in the testing we are issuing everything ourselves. So yeah, it it is an easy move, and I think in a future we will all gain a lot. Awesome, very interesting talk. I think it's we we are already over. Uh, we are now going to go to the um, usual maintainers and community growth section, where we are again talking and insisting that participating in these GitHub discussions is very valuable for us, and also if. If you guys see small things that you can contribute to, like updating uh, the community docs, uh, adding some tests, this is also very valuable for us. And it's part of the, one of the metrics that we want to continue improving in the next months. And also around the last one, I think that, uh, as you know, that the, the, the voting has not yet started. But a reminder to set up your wallet if you don't, if you are, of course, if you are willing to participate on Catalyst voting to register your wallet, I think that you guys still have like 20 days to do so. Um, and yeah, the amount of other that you need to vote is not very high. So, yeah. And anyone from the community that wants to yeah, I think all of us are known. So yeah, we're not going to go through presentations and all that. And the usual q and I think that I've been asking this too, too much. So if anyone has the any question or doubt, please raise your hand. If not, I guess that we are going to leave it here so far. Hey, this is John. I'll just uh, jump in real quick. Roberto and I are together uh, in California. We were at the Linux Foundation Decentralized Trust meeting last week. Um, and Identus was represented uh, mostly by us, but uh, people were very interested and curious from the other projects. Uh, and that was awesome. Roberto can speak more to that uh, in detail if you want to hit him up. And we are just uh, getting to IIW right now. So be here 
Yeah, really, really appreciate that. I hope that you guys enjoy and stay noisy as, as I usually say. Yeah, and I saw the umbrella with the, all the logos of Hyperledger. It's very, that is very cool. Cool. So yeah, again, if there's any question, feel free to reach us out on Discord or open a bug on one of our repositories. If not, uh, I think that to, to finalize the call, I'm just going to jump to the... to the Aventus repository or the main repository where we are Uh, hosting the GitHub discussions and the projects, just as a reminder to make sure that that we that we understand what what's going on here. So on these first two columns, we are still working on the list of features that we want to include in this. But th these things that we said around making everything easier to configure and easier to deploy and faster to load uh, will be placed in in one of these. Then in the backlog, we have a list of things that we know that we wanted to complete, but we are not going to be allocating resources in the immediate term. But these are also the proposals that you may want to bring, like the case of the decentralized web node, which is a proposal that comes from the community. And this is the place where you basically propose what you want. Then in plant, we we have the list of things that we are planning to, to work on and in progress and, and QA, we have the list of things that we are working on and that are in testing phase. And that's basically it. Um, and then around the discussions, it is very easy. So in what we need or what we want from in this two, for example, is just that you go here and you vote with your honest feedback and then feel free to make any comment. But what we will be interested on is showing the results of the vote. And also around the issue and capabilities is again the same thing. It is um, a list of questions and also the ability to write whatever we consider. And in the case of the use case examples, I think that I proposed um, this one and Fabio is saying that particularly related to this question. Let me just go. Yes, it is related. Yeah, Eric, if you could put the, the links on, on that discussion board, I'll check this afternoon. Yeah, it would be great if you could just add the comment in here. Or in the one that applies. Yeah, I think it's this one. Cool. Well, if there's nothing else, again, I hope that we all enjoy our time, but especially those that are going to go to an event. And yeah, see you next week. Yeah. Thank you, Javier. Thank you, guys. Thank you. That's out. Thanks, bye.